Hey everybody, Chris Collier here, your social media icon with the Conquer with Chris podcast. I have 30 minutes roughly with the game changer, Chris Williams. Let's take a look on the inside. Come join me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my uh, privilege and honor to have Chris Williams, the game changer. Chris, welcome to the show. Man, thanks, Chris. Just glad to be here. Well, uh, we, we, we've we been fighting technical difficulties today, some uh, self-inflicted and some uh, computer-inflicted. Uh, Chris is with us. He's from Memphis, Tennessee. He is um, just – I've got to know him over the last couple of weeks. He's a great guy. And uh, he does a lot of uh, – I'll let him tell you what he does. Chris, um, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started. Yeah, Chris. Well, first – Again, thanks for letting me be here. I thoroughly love talking anything entrepreneurship. I'm such a geek when it comes to this stuff. So thanks for giving me a chance to just talk and talk and talk. So I'm an entrepreneur and I've been doing it for a while. And I actually got my start when I, I'm a social entrepreneur. Let's talk about that first. Social entrepreneurs typically love business ventures that, that change society or bring a lot of good to someone else. So that's not to say most entrepreneurial ventures don't. It's just simply saying, I love seeing a direct connection between what I do and how I function as an entrepreneur and someone's life changing. Um, I've never been great at product sales for that reason. I'm better at service sales. You might find yourself or anybody listening in that same position. If you're more interested in seeing the direct change, you're going to love those direct service impacts you can have on people. Anyway, started when I was 11 years old. I actually got my uh, my first gig as an entrepreneur when I was learning to cut grass and I, I went down the street, knocking on doors, asking people if I'd cut their grass and realized I needed equipment and I needed my own equipment to really make this bigger and better. So like first or second, third sale into the process of cutting grass, I finally asked somebody, hey, you hate cutting your grass, right? Absolutely. Memphis, hot, humid, nasty. Nobody wants to be out in July. Can I, can I cut your grass for free? And I'll edge it and blow it if I can have your lawnmower at the end of the season. So it's, it's spring right now, and I'm going to cut your grass all summer long, absolutely free, 100%, till the leaves start falling. And in exchange, I get to keep the lawnmower at my house all summer. And I'll take care of your grass from then on. You can pay me next year. But for this year, I'm just working for the lawnmower. They love the idea. I got my first piece of equipment. I was able to cut four or five yards that summer and I was off to the races. And, and by the, by the end of, I was, I was 11 then when I was 14, I hired a driver cause I couldn't drive yet, but my, my grass cutting business had grown bigger than I could walk to it. I think I had 20 or so yards at that point. And then when I was 16, got a truck and on and on we went, I was running two crews by the time I was 16 and a half or 17. And then that paid a lot of the way through high school, college, and, and when I was in college, I didn't cut much grass. I traveled. I was dating the girl I'm married to and just had a fantastic life going because I had learned a couple of things. I had learned selling, I learned processes, and I learned people. And, and those three things really launched me into being an entrepreneur. That, that's a great story. I mean, I think that's probably one of the reasons we get along so well because my entrepreneur journey started, I didn't say this uh, previously, but my entrepreneur's journey started when I was nine. I was a newspaper boy in Michigan. No way. And uh, I had two paper routes. Everyone That's cold, had, man. Michigan in the winter throwing paper? Oh, Ooh. man. Um, I had a great dad who took me around. Uh, but a lot of times I did have to go out on my own. Um, it taught me the certain things like, you know, the thought process of hard work, um, work hard work. Uh, and then I also learned how to work smart. So, like, I knew how to do things a certain way that sped myself up. I was also homeschooled. So I got to the route a little bit earlier and got mm -hmm. done a little bit earlier ahead of people. But right. back to your story, you, you learned the sales process and you learned how to take no and live with it. Right. A lot of people nowadays, um, they're in whatever business they're in and they can't handle the no. So let's, well, how do you figure that out? Right. Um, we talked about, um, being an entrepreneur, your life is just, um, being a failure with enthusiasm, right? Uh, yeah. Always being enthused for the next uh, failure. So 
what it, how, how do you get through the nose? Yeah, so failure is a big part of it. If you ask my kids today what I do for a living, in fact, you know, you go to those um, career days where you get to go and tell the class and all your, your kids, peers, what you do for a living. And, and unfortunately, I'm not a firefighter or some cool sports athlete or my job doesn't come with a bunch of goodies I can give away in a box. And everybody's like, yay, free stuff. I'm a failure. That's what I do for a living. I fail for a living. And I've embraced that early on. And I, I'm not looking to get rejected in the sales process. And I'm not looking to fail at, at the work that I do for my clients. But I do know that failure is a real part of selling. And so when you start out as an entrepreneur, and even now, you fail often more than you succeed. And cutting grass, back when I was 11 or when I was 20 cutting grass, I'd knock on a lot of doors before I'd get one yes. And that's the way it is still today. My closing rates have gone up and my ratios are better, but I know that I have to reach out to a lot of people to ask a lot of questions, to get in a lot of conversations, to get that one big close. And that's a, that's a unique difference between entrepreneurs and your average nine to five mentality. And that's why there's so few real entrepreneurs in the world and so few good ones is because the rejection and the failure kind of get in some people's heads, but it's okay. It doesn't have to get in your head. It's nothing personal. It's just simply a learning process. We have to learn what the market, what the people on the other side of the conversation really want and desire. And we have to learn to, to match up our skill set with that desire so we can offer them an opportunity and a service or a product. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs, especially early on, really miss. They, they miss out on the importance of knowing it's okay if I go through a couple of dozen conversations and nothing happens. Just so I learn and just so I really get to understand what does that people group really want and how can I meet them where they are? That's, that's critical. Uh, I heard someone the other day, they said, uh, I don't fail. I either learn or I make a sale. Mm -hmm. And cause a lot of times, like, just to be real is we don't learn. Most of us don't learn. Um, when things are going well, right? Mm -hmm. People say, well, I learn when things are going great. That's not necessarily, that's not normally true. Normally we learn from mistakes, problems, difficulties, dilemmas, challenges, obstacles, those things we learn from, like mm -hmm. even now, I hate to date this recording, but uh, even now with the coronavirus going around and us being, uh, most people would stay at home orders still, um, we can't do what we normally do socially um, to talk to people and meet people. So now there's a need, there's an actual need for people to interact, right? Yeah. So um, we have to now, a lot of if you're an entrepreneur listen to this this is a time now for you to take action this is not time for inaction for an entrepreneur would you agree with that chris oh absolutely and and i'm with you i hate dating recordings but, but this is a good one to date because no matter when someone's listening to this if you're listening to this right now and it's three years after this whole corona thing um this is early april or mid-april 2020 if you're if you're three years after this and Corona has gone up and down a few cycles, come back in the winter, who knows what's going to happen. But if you're experiencing hardship for any other reason in your business besides Corona, it's just regular business. That's life. But it's so, so important as an entrepreneur to learn and to, to find those niches and those opportunities. When this whole Corona thing happened um, several, I guess, a month and a half, two months ago now, and it was really starting to rock the U.S. market, I was actually excited for the entrepreneurial opportunity. Again, I'm a social entrepreneurial entrepreneur. So I love finding ways that I can actually see a change in someone, see them grow. And I knew that this would be really difficult for a lot of people. And I knew that my skill set and the hardship I had already lived through as an entrepreneur had prepared me a unique way to be able to jump on this thing and not be daunted by it. And so just, just because of my past experience, and when you're listening into this, years later maybe, your past experience gives you an edge that other people simply don't have. And it's really important to know that when times do get tough for a general population, you have something to offer as an entrepreneur that's different than most people have in their heads because you're wired differently. 
You're wired to overcome. You're wired to find opportunity. You're wired to find solutions. That's what you do. That's why you're an entrepreneur. And that skill set is so valuable in tough times. Yeah, I would, I, I would jump off the back of that and say, um, I, I got excited too. I was like, okay, this could be a whole uh, boatload of trouble for the, everybody. Mm -hmm. But then I said to myself, I said, well, this is the time we have to take charge and uh, do something different. We have to do something different. And we got to take action where we haven't taken action before. Move forward where we've been standing still. Um, I have a lot of friends in a lot of different industries. A, a lot of the network marketing companies have taken off. Like they're blowing up big time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I'm just looking around like, okay, well, I have to blow myself up, right? Not literally, not stick a dynamite. <laughs> but um, I've got to, I've got to do something different. I've got to make some changes. So, um, yeah, one of the reasons we're doing this podcast. So Chris, you, you, you got through uh, school, you sold uh, your lawnmower or landscaping business, landscaping business, and now you're doing, what is it exactly? How would you reference what you do now? Social entrepreneur in, in, and what's your primary focus is? Yeah, so I have two primary focuses right now. This is our, I'm on a, I have a creative agency, meaning we do a lot of marketing and, and communication for the clients that we work for. We tell their story in their spaces. So right now, the agency that I have, we focus on surgeons in really niche communities, and they're all very specialized surgeons. They do very specialized procedures and they're in very unique communities. And that's what we do. We take those surgeons into those communities, we grow their practices, we help them communicate with the hospitals, referring physicians, the patient base, all of that. We build their teams, their systems, we do all kinds of work. I love that work. But I love it again because I'm a social entrepreneur. I like getting involved with clients where I can see it or direct impact on the client or the people they serve. That's, that's one space we work in. We're really good um, at, and this is, I think, going back from when I was 11 years old, just learning what I've learned. I'm 43 now, so I'm over 30 years of doing this. That seems crazy when I say it that way. But I got to get started so young. I'm a baby, right? I'm so young. No, I got to get started so young that, that it gave me a lot of time to practice and iterate me as a human. So the, the high ticket sales, the processes, and the people that go into running an efficient business are something I've practiced for a long time. So now we have a very profitable practice and I work about 30 minutes a day and I get a lot of time to do a lot of cool things. And that's a unique place that I don't take for granted. But what it's done is it opened up a completely separate thing that I never thought was going to be there. People started asking me, how do you actually run your business and how do you do this? And so we built out a whole nother brand where we get to just teach myself and my executive team, we get to teach other entrepreneurs how to build the practices they want to build, how to build their own agency model, businesses, whatever it is, speaking, um, uh, consulting, typically in that creative agency space, we get to show them how to actually run businesses. And I love doing that. Like love teaching. It's so fun. That goes back to your social entrepreneurship as well, right? Because you get to see impact in people's lives. You teach them your model, and they make it their own and probably change some things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's still on a um, framework, if you will, of what you found to work. And so yeah. now they're having success. They're sharing that success with you. Mm -hmm. And that, that that's just amazing. So yeah. I always talk to that guy, that gal, that person. That isn't, I know we've been in this for a month and a half roughly, but they still haven't made up their mind. Talk to them, give them hope, give them uh, something to leave with that, that, that'll help them uh, maybe make a change and become an entrepreneur or um, do just do something different. Because mm -hmm. this is what I do know. When this is over, we're not going back to normal. It's going to be a new normal, whatever that is. And... Um, I've also already heard that a lot of companies are already telling their people when we're through this, we're not going to have offices anymore. You will work from home. Mm -hmm. So um, just address that person and uh, give them some hope, some uh, thought process. Maybe, maybe they're scared about getting the notes. So sure. yeah, 
Absolutely. So if you're, if you're currently um, leaving a nine to five kind of role and you're getting into being an entrepreneur, if that's where you are in this space or you're kind of playing with the idea in your head, that's a really big decision. First thing I would say is you need to have really honest conversations with your spouse, partner, whoever you are living with or whoever is depending on you for a paycheck or for part of the part of the paychecks, however that works in your world, have honest conversations so you can do this as a team. It's really important. I, I can't overemphasize how important it is to have really good support around you when you're moving into an entrepreneurial venture. Um, if you've got negative people around you, try to minimize the connection there. If you've got positive people around you, lean in. Okay, that's number one. Number two is really thinking through as you make the transition, what is it that, and let's think three things here. What is it that number one, you really believe based on information you've gathered that a market needs? Now as entrepreneurs, we often think of really great ideas. We're amazing at ideas, but often it's just because it pops in our head and it's not proven based on what the market wants. So really get out there, talk to literally 30 people and ask them that are in a defined niche in the world, a certain type of industry, a certain type of job, a certain type of personal need they've got, whatever it is, and ask them what's working and what's not. What are their biggest frustrations? What keeps them up at night? What makes them scared? What are they worried about? Ask them those questions, write it down. When you see a pattern, really over 20 to 30 people, that's going to give you a really good indication of what they actually need. So that's number one, find out what the market really, really needs, not based on your intuition, but based on the research. I'm a very intuitive person and I'm wrong most of the time. I'm right when I ask people, I right, never assume that makes a, you know, what assumptions do. So ask what the market needs. Number two is really start to find out what can you do or learn quickly or retool or help them understand that will fix their need. So it might not be your native skill. You might not have a PhD in solving their problem, but find a part of their problem that you can solve or that you can learn quickly about, or that you can find other information about and present to them and help them. Find a way to help them with that problem. That's number two. So find their need by the real research. Find out what you can do to help with that. And then third, make sure you actually like doing it, okay? There's a lot of people with a lot of needs. We all see that in the world. You can watch the news any day of the week and find it out. But the real thing is, are you truly passionate? And I don't mean just Disney movies following your dream, although I do love Disney movies and I do love following a dream. But that dream has to be followed with intentionality, which means the research and means finding something you can truly do. And then making sure you're passionate about it. So those three things, the research, finding out what you can truly do about it and making sure you're really passionate about it because that passion is going to allow you to sustain the energy that's required to start something new. It takes energy and you got to be able to sustain that. Wow. That, that sounds like a course right there. Yeah. Well, Hey, there you go. <laughs> if, if that's resonating with anybody, at least 30 <laughs> people, please let me know and we'll make a course out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's good stuff. Cause like, you don't, and you know, really the worst part isn't the positive or negative people. I found it's the people that have indifference. Mm -hmm. uh, that if you have to definitely cut those people off because they they will just drain you because they they just want the old you back or the you that yeah. had more availability, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, but what what Chris was saying is so true. Uh, you've got to cut off those people that are negative. You've got to be around you that are positive, and um, there's so much on YouTube. You can look up uh, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, all those people. They'll help get you. But I would say even before that, you got to develop a mindset, a mindset kind of like a turtle. I, I call it the turtle mindset because, like, uh, you may rock a turtle a little bit. You may hurt, you know, bother it, but it's going to go into its shell, and you, then it's bulletproof kind of. Not really, but the thought process is you're not going to mess with me. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in my safe space. Mm. And uh, you've got to become like that mentally. Mm -hmm. you, you can't let things uh, jar you. Mm -hmm. So what, yeah. what, what's, uh, what's, what do you have on the horizon, Chris? What projects do you have? And uh, 
what things you, you have, uh, if, you, if you can share it, maybe it's top secret. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Right now we are diving so deep into the creative entrepreneurial, creative agency world. So right now, all of our research and our time is going into that space. So people that own agencies like myself, where we do a lot of marketing, storytelling, copywriting, graphic design, website building, coaching, teaching, consulting, all that kind of stuff. We're getting deep into that, that niche, that network. We really understand what's going on. That's, that's our own agency model. That's what we live in every day. But there's a lot of assumptions I've made over the years about what my peers need because I've never realized that the high ticket sales and the processes and the people were struggles for other agencies. And that turns out that's a real thing. People need help with that. Those came naturally to me or they came, I guess they came over hard years worked before I knew I should be documenting why that was working or why it was a struggle. So for me, I do the same thing. I, I practice what I preach. I'm out there talking to people constantly, day in, day out, really understanding that market. And we're creating a lot of content. We teach a mastermind for those folks. We have a lot of information that we share for free. My goal there is just to make sure that anybody who's wanting to get in that creative sales space, that they can get in there and get after it at whatever budget level they've got. If it's free or paid, I want people to see how to do it because here's the thing. You've got something in you, whoever's listening, you've got something in you that's amazing and can help so many people. It's just simply figuring out who needs the help and how do I actually communicate that in a way that can get them to take action, hire you and get it done. And that's, that's what I love teaching. It's changed. It's changed me, my life, my family's life, just because I figured out how to actually connect the dots and I want to help others do the same. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, um, my name is Chris Collier, the social media icon. It's been Conquer with Chris with the game changer, Chris Williams. Thank you so much. Listen, hopefully this has been uh, at least entertaining, but hopefully you've gotten some out of this. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe wherever you are. And thank you guys. Have a great day.